morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good to have y'all all here this morning for staff meeting. Uh, on the pep meeting part, I want to talk to you about quality of ministry this morning. And uh, I think in the day and age we're living in, this gets to be more and more and more and more important. Uh, I remember, I can't remember if I read this or heard this said. It's not original to me, but um, I heard either, either heard this or read this several years ago in doing some research and some study on ministry. And a guy made this statement. He said, everybody in the whole wide world has the right to be a jerk but you. <laughs> Think about that. And the in quality of ministry. Do you realize that every single person in here that's going to come in this building today knows exactly what your job title should be and how you ought to act? Right. Now, not that they're willing to live by those same standards, you know, but, but they all, if you look at ministry... In the world out there today, whether people are living for Christ, whether they're not living for Christ, everybody knows exactly how the preacher ought to act, the associate pastor ought to act, the song leader ought to act, the guitar player ought to act. They all know exactly how you ought to act, right? You all know I'm telling the truth. We, uh, in ministry, we live under a microscope whether we like it or not. And so with that said, as far as quality of ministry, it really needs to be something that's on our mind. Whether we like it or not, everybody, know, everybody else in the world has a right to be a jerk but us, so to speak. And so as quality of ministry, we really need to be very specific in leading by example. The whole world, even though the whole world, you know, if you have a stumble, they're going to point it out. They're going to put it all over Facebook. They're going to run an ad in the newspaper. They're going to do everything they can to make sure everybody knows that you fell. But in reality, they don't want you to. In reality, they really do want us to live up to that standard. They really do want somebody on a pedestal out there. The Bible says it this way. You are the light of the world. Yes. You are the light of the world. And they really do want a lighthouse on that hill that they can look to and say, you know what? If my life was normal, it would look like that. If my life was right, it would look like that. If I was living like I was supposed to, it would look like that. And I know sometimes that puts a lot of burden on us in ministry. And it's, you know, we think, ah, how can I be perfect? Nobody's perfect. And in reality, I understand that. But always just keep in your mind quality of ministry. And as ministers, let us lead by example to the best of our ability. Be on time. Participate. Be an open worshiper. Uh, do all things unto Christ. If you're going to do something, do it with excellence. Put the time in. Put the prayer in. Put the fasting in. Be spiritually mature and ready for your ministry. Whatever you do, do it as unto Christ. And I know that, you know, um, uh, ministry sometimes is enough burden on its own. You know, Alan sometimes got all he can handle, just making sure he's got the right songs and doesn't miss a note. And everybody's got all their words and he's got everything put together. And then you say, but I got to act right too. <laughs> you know, I mean, and I have to act right at the same time. And the answer is, remember this, really, our first step in ministry is to be like Christ. Our first step in ministry really is to lead by example, to be like Christ. Remember this, that people are going to come in here today and things they're going to see and things they're going to hear and things they're going to witness are going to have eternal consequences for them. Eternal consequences based upon things they're going to see and hear today right here at Bell's Chapel Assembly of God. So with that said, remember this. Be quick to repent. Quick to say, I'm sorry. You know, really, the ability to say, I'm sorry, and be the first to repent, even if you don't feel like you should, is really a sign of maturity. Right. It's a sign of spiritual maturity. It's a sign that I love people more than I love myself. Be willing to be wrong for the good of somebody else. Even if you know you're right and somebody comes to you with something and you know you didn't do anything wrong and you know you're right, will it be willing to be wrong for their sake? Right. If you're mean to offend your weaker brother, don't eat it, right? And I know sometimes these are the harder parts of ministry when we think about it, but it has so much value in the eyes of the world. We don't want to do anything to deter people from finding Christ. And again, I don't expect perfection. I just expect grace. And I know you'll do the best you can. I just want to encourage you today. Do everything as under Christ. Lead by example. Seek his face. And after that, everything else will be all right. The last thing I want to say on this, and I say this often, uh, especially when I get to this part. Remember this. Do not grow weary in well-doing. To ask for help is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. Do not dry up at your post and die. Right. Amen. 
Amen. If you're doing something and it's starting to become a burden, and you know, and you say, I, I'm only, since I already picked on Alan, I'll pick on Alan again. Let's say Alan was to say, you know what? I've been up here playing that guitar for years. And I would, I, I need about six months to stand on the floor instead of be on the floor, instead of be leading the floor. You know, I've had Sunday school teachers in the past come and say, you know what? I've been teaching Sunday school for five years and I need to be in Sunday school for a little while. That is not a sign of weakness. That is a sign of strength. It's not a sign of immaturity. It's very much a sign of maturity to know when you need fed. And so if you come to that, please do not, do not dry up on the vine. Do not give so much that you become weak in yourself. If you need the time, come let us know. We'll give you a sabbatical. We'll find somebody to cover you, get you some strength back, give you some worship time, whatever you need. And we want you to be strong. So if you need it, just be sure and ask for it. So that's the quality of ministry part this morning. Now, I want to go back and read a scripture to you that I have already read a couple of times. And I may read it to you a couple more times before we get done. But this is out of 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And he said, Thus says the Lord, Make the valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, You shall not see the wind nor the rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that your cattle and your animals may drink. I told you the story already. Uh, they needed rain. They were dry. They were dried parts. No water. The armies were dying. The cattle were dying. The horses were dying. They were in trouble. And the prophet says, Dig the ditches. It's not raining. You're not going to hear any thunder. You're not going to see any wind blow, but dig the ditches. Get out there and start digging. And I preached that with a high expectation as the title of that sermon. And so this morning I want to remind you, I unloaded this on the body Wednesday night, that the Lord has really dropped in my heart a thousand souls at Bell's Chapel in 2018. Yes. yes. A thousand souls at Bell's Chapel in 2018. And I want to remind you that if you really do have high expectations, high expectations are going to change your meditation, then it's going to change your conversation, then it's going to change your preparation. These guys out there in that desert, when there was no water, no wind, no thunder, no lightning, it didn't even look like there was a cloud in the sky, they still took a shovel and began to dig ditches. Why? Because they had an expectation that a vision was about to come to pass. That an expectation that water was going to rush into that valley and it was going to fill up all those ditches. And I want to remind you this. If God performs a miracle like that, it's just Him acting like itself. Right. When God brings water on the dry ground, when God causes water to arrive and there's no wind and there's no lightning and there's no thunder, it's just God acting like Himself. And did you know it is God's will that none should perish but all have everlasting life? It is God's will for a thousand people to be saved in 2018. And if God's will isn't, they're going to be saved somewhere. Why not here? Why not now? Why not right now at Bell's Chapel Assembly of God Church, 1,000 souls in 2018? Why not fill the ditches here right now? Joel chapter 2 verse 28 He said this I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy And your old men shall dream dreams I just have figured out at this point I am no longer a young man I'm about to hit that breakover point And it does not offend me at all To go to this scripture and say I am an old man dreaming a dream that the God himself has dropped inside of me a dream of something that's too big for me. I cannot figure out where to put a thousand people. I cannot figure out how to reach a thousand people. It's bigger than my eye can see. It's bigger than my ear can hear. And it is bigger than my heart can understand. But I want to remind you that's not where that verse stops. That scripture goes on and says, but it has been entered into your heart by the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't have to see it with my eyes. I don't have to understand it with my heart. I don't have to be able to hear it in the physical realm. For I I know that I know that I know that yeah. God has put down inside of me a dream for 1,000 souls at Bell's Chapel in 2018. And I want to say to you this morning, one plants, one waters, and God will give the increase. Yeah. So listen, staff. I want you to change your conversation. I want you to begin to change your meditation and begin to let it change your preparation. What that means is Alan is going to have to figure out how to lead praise and worship for more people than he's ever stood before in his life. How am I going to lead praise and worship with a building so full that it's standing room only? How am I going to bring people into worship when the aisles are full of people and the wall is lined with people and the upfront is full of people? How do I do that? And his conversation begins to wrap around it and his meditation begins to wrap around it. And then he begins to say not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. It matters not by God. I don't care how they get in the building. You bring them on and let's get them saved. Hallelujah.
Let your conversation begin to be wrapped around a meditation of 1,000 souls for 2018 and let that become our preparation. You are the harvesters. You are the tip of the spear. You are heroes of faith. You are soldiers well armed. You're the staff at the place that God is preparing for 1,000 souls for 2018. Amen. The tip of the spear. You are the harvester. You are the sickle that gets put into the wheat and draws the wheat in. That's you. Because you're the heroes of faith and the soldiers well armed for a thousand souls to be saved in 2018. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. I don't know if they're going to come in all in one great big revival. I don't know if they're going to come in five and ten at a time. I don't know. I don't care. All I know is I'm digging a ditch. Yes. Amen. And you say, I don't see anything changing. I don't see anything coming. They're not lined up at the door this morning when we got here. The parking lot was closer to empty than it was to full when you got here this morning. Well, I want to tell you, that's what it looks like when you can't see the wind and you can't hear the right. thunder and you can't see the lightning. That's what it looks like when you can't see the rain. But you're still going to dig a ditch. Amen. Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. So let's line up this morning around this front and uh, let's pray over this thing this morning and be prepared.